We are met to thank God for that event in this country to which the name of revolution has been given and which for more than a century it has been usual for the Friends of Freedom under the title of the Revolution Society to celebrate with expressions of joy and exultation. By a bloodless victory, the fetters which despotism had been long preparing for us were broken. The rights of the people were asserted, a tyrant expelled, and a sovereign of our own choice appointed in his room. Security was given to our property, and our consciences were emancipated. The bounds of free inquiry were enlarged, and that era of light and liberty was introduced among us, by which we have been made an example to other kingdoms. Had it not been for this deliverance, the probability is that, instead of being thus distinguished, we should now have been a base people, groaning under the infamy and misery of popery and slavery. Let us therefore offer thanksgivings to God, the author of all our blessings. But let us remember that we ought not to satisfy ourselves with thanksgivings. Our gratitude, if genuine, will be accompanied with endeavors to give stability to the deliverance our country has obtained and to extend and improve the happiness with which the revolution has blessed us. Let us in particular take care not to forget the principles of the revolution. First, the right to liberty of conscience in religious matters. Secondly, the right to resist power when abused. And thirdly, the right to choose our own governors, to cashier them for misconduct, and to frame a government for ourselves. On these three principles, and more especially the last, was the revolution founded. Were it not true that liberty of conscience is a sacred right, that power abused justifies resistance, and that civil authority is a delegation from the people, were not, I say, all this true, the revolution would have been not an assertion, but an invasion of rights. You may reasonably expect that I should now close this address to you, but I cannot yet dismiss you. I must not conclude without recalling the consideration of the favorableness of the present times to all exertions in the cause of public liberty. What an eventful period is this. I am thankful that I have lived to it. I have lived to see the rights of men better understood than ever, and nations panting for liberty which seem to have lost the idea of it. I have lived to see the 30 millions of people indignant and resolute spurning at slavery and demanding liberty with an irresistible voice, their king led in triumph and an arbitrary monarch surrendering himself to his subjects. After sharing in the benefits of one revolution, I have been spared to be a witness to two other revolutions, both glorious. And now, methinks, I see the ardor for liberty catching and spreading. Be encouraged, all ye friends of freedom and writers in its defense. The times are auspicious. Your labors have not been in vain. Behold, the light you have struck out after setting America free, reflected to France, and there kindled into a blaze that lays despotism in ashes and warms and illuminates Europe. Tremble, all ye oppressors of the world, Take warning, all ye supporters of slavish governments and slavish hierarchies. You cannot now hold the world in darkness. Restore to mankind their rights and consent to the correction of abuses before they and you are destroyed together.